Hello everyone, I'm Brett, and welcome to Nightwood Guns. A few weeks ago, I did a review on the Tier 1 Concealed Axis Elite holster, and some people in the comments were asking me for some tips I might be able to give them on carrying appendix, so today, we're gonna talk about it. Now, I have been legally concealed carrying for about a decade now, and for about six years I was carrying behind the hip in the 3, 4, 5 o'clock region, and for the last four years I've been carrying appendix, so I definitely know the pros and cons of both, and I can tell you for a fact that appendix carry is the best place that you can carry concealed on your body, but just because it's the best and the most effective doesn't necessarily make it practical or possible for everybody. But hopefully my tips can help guide you on your journey to carrying in the appendix area. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video because the last tip I'm going to give, a lot of people aren't going to like to hear it, but honestly it's the truth, but it's the best tip that I have when it comes to appendix carry. If you're new to the channel and you're looking for something to read in your spare time, I'm an author. I wrote two short novels, Armed Instinct and its sequel, Countdown to Dawn. Check the link in the description below to pick up a couple copies of the books to help support the channel. If you've already picked up copies of the books because you've been around here for a while, be sure to leave reviews on Amazon for them. That is the number one way you can help support the channel. So the first tip for carrying appendix is going to be regarding holsters, and that's essentially the sidecar holster versus a solo holster. First of all, ask yourself, do you want to carry a spare magazine? If the answer is no, then go ahead and default over to the solo holster. If you do want to carry a spare magazine, then the sidecar is definitely an option, but the sidecar style holster is not for everyone. This is the tier one concealed Axis Elite, and the spare magazine holder is shot corded to the holster. Now, sidecar rigs are not made for every single body. So the sidecar style holster works best for people who are thin, athletic, or fit, or have what I would consider to be an average sized belly area. You can absolutely make it work with wedges, which we will talk about later. Now, when it comes to thinner, athletic, and fitter people, I actually recommend the sidecar style holster because it can be difficult for people who are thinner to conceal in the appendix area with a solo holster over to one side because it bulges out your belt line on one side and the other side is flat against your body. And because of that, when your shirt drapes across your belt, it can make you look like you got a tuma. It's not a tuma. It's not a tuma at all. But with the sidecar style holster, it evenly distributes that belt bulge all the way across your midsection, giving it a much more natural look with the shirt draped over it. But if you are someone who has a larger belly region, then the sidecar style holster is going to be very difficult for you to conceal and wear comfortably. The reason for that is when it's up against your body, this is just a lot of mass to have in front of your stomach and it's gonna be pushing out like this. It's gonna be uncomfortable and it's gonna be difficult for you to conceal. So if you're somebody with a larger belly where it might just be uncomfortable to have something right in front of your belly, then you're definitely going to want to go with a solo holster. This is a tier one concealed Zyphos V2. So instead of wearing it in the front of your gut, you are basically moving it off to the side and wearing it kind of in the one or two o'clock region. And if you want to carry a spare magazine, you get a separate magazine carrier and wear it on the other side of your gut. That's going to be the best way for you to comfortably conceal in the appendix area if you've got a larger belt. This also applies to females. I don't know many females that enjoy wearing a sidecar style holster. The vast majority that I know carry just a solo holster and that just has to do with the way that they're built. They typically find these to be more comfortable. So if you're a lady, I'm going to refer you over to the YouTube channel Armed and Styled. I personally don't know her, but she runs an awesome channel and can really help guide you through the unique challenges a woman faces when trying to carry concealed on body. So the next tip is going to be talking about wedges. Now, like I mentioned before, any thin athletic or fit person is probably not going to have to run wedges on their holster. That's not to say that you can't benefit from a wedge. It can help cure a hot spot if you're feeling one on your body, but you're probably not going to need it. Now, if you have like an average size belly and you're running a sidecar style holster, the wedge is absolutely going to help because essentially it goes on the back side of the holster here. And tier one concealed makes these wedges. In my opinion, they make the best wedges. They're very simple, just their peel and play. Just slap them on there and they stay on. For a larger gun like this with a weapon light, they have a wide wedge that's about that wide. I would highly recommend that one. And what it does is when it's up against your body, let's say you have a gut and so it's spilling out a little this way, when you put the wedge on, it pushes against that lower part of your body and is going to even it out and help you conceal it better. Now, if you're going to go with the solo holster, you can still benefit from the wedge. Like I said, it can help cure hot spots. Or if you have a larger belly, you can toss a wedge on there. If it's spilling out over your belt line, you put this on and that applies very soft, gentle pressure and is going to even that out to help push the grip against your body to help you conceal it a little better. Also with appendix carry, you're definitely going to want to go with two clips or soft loops on the gun. The single one, you find the gun kind of tipping one way, so I definitely recommend going with two clips, no matter what clips you pick, and the concealment claw that pushes against your belt to help tuck the grip of the gun 
against your body. My next tip is going to be have a very sturdy belt. Now there are a lot of good belts out there. I'm a simple guy. I went with a Wilderness Tactical Frequent Flyer because it comes in a one and three quarter inch belt and that's just my personal preference. I tend to carry heavy guns and I found that the one and three quarter inch belt helps support the really heavy guns a little better. But the important thing is that I went with a five stitch belt to give it more sturdiness that allows me to support the weight of the gun. Because the last thing you want is the gun drooping with the belt. Along with the belt, something that a lot of people don't think about when they're switching over to appendix, or if they're just starting with appendix, is the belt buckle can get in the way. So this is my typical outfit, and this is me concealed carrying a firearm. What am I concealed carrying? A full-size SIG P320 Spectre Comp with an X300 on there. Now, I am by no means a dude of larger stature, and I'm able to conceal a full-size firearm with a weapon light in the appendix area in just a t-shirt. So there you have it. Now, as far as the belt buckle goes, as you can see, I have moved the belt buckle over here. So basically I put my belt on just one loop over so that the belt buckle chills over here. This is the Wilderness Tactical Frequent Flyer belt. So it's a low profile buckle anyways. That way I have this nice clear section up here for me to put the clips of my holster right on the front. My next tip for appendix carry is going to be about wardrobe. Now, when we start talking about our EDC kits, it's really easy to get hyper-focused on the gun, on the holster, on the ammunition that you're carrying, the weapon light, flashlight, pocket knife. That stuff is all super cool, which is why we get hyper-focused on it. What's not super cool, unless you're into fashion, is wardrobe. Now, I view wardrobe as being a part of your EDC kit. Some thought has to go into it. Now, as you can see, this is not a particularly baggy shirt, yet I'm able to conceal a full-size firearm. The trick is I'm avoiding shirts that are like this, which, I mean, honestly, I could probably walk around in public like this and nobody would notice. Now, what I look for is I look for shirts that have they're tight across the chest and the shoulders, and they come back down at the waistline right here, but you've got some empty space here in the middle. Now, the best way to find a shirt like this is to go to a bunch of different stores with your EDC gear on and try on shirts in the fitting room with your gear. And essentially, you're looking for two things. One, does it hide your gun? And two, is it easy to clear for a draw? Now, I'm not saying draw your gun in the fitting room, but lift your shirt. Does it hang up on your holster? Because sometimes you have shirts that are really clingy. They can cling to the clips on your holster. So you want to make sure that it is easy to clear and that it hides your gun properly. The other thing is to order clothes online from companies that have great return policies. So you can do kind of a little fashion show trying it on with your EDC gear. And that way, if you're at home, you can actually do some dry fire reps drawing the gun to see if it's easy to clear from concealment. Next up in wardrobe, we're going to talk about pants. Do you buy pants a size up, two sizes up, maybe opt for some pants with elasticity? I'm going to be completely honest. I wear pants that are true to size. I have a 30 inch waist and I buy 30 inch pants and they are just regular denim jeans. They're not elastic at all. In fact, I find that wearing true to size pants with little elasticity actually helps keep the gun in place for me. Now, this might just be a your mileage may vary situation, it might be a very personal thing, which of course is why I recommend trying those pants on with your EDC gear and just like the shirts to make sure it works for you. Next tip is gonna be about sitting down. This is a concern that I hear from so many people. It's like, oh, how do you sit down with all of that in the front of your pants? Well, I'm gonna be honest, this is something that I really don't get because I've never had the issue. There are a lot of people that claim to have tried appendix carry, but man, it just stabbed them when they sat down. I can't really speak to that because I haven't experienced it, but the thing that I can recommend is playing with the ride height on the clips on the holster. If you move the clips down, which will move the holster and your gun up, that's going to give you some more clearance so that it's not stabbing you in the thighs or the lower abdomen or whatever. And of course, there's always the tried and true, raise up your pants before you sit down. That absolutely works. Again, I don't do that, but that's something that I've heard other people say that, you know, just lifting your pants before sitting down can help give you the clearance that you need. But I just kind of wear my holster at a natural ride height and I don't have any problems sitting down. If you are getting any kind of stabbing, that's something else that a wedge can help you out with. It can help alleviate hot spots. Now, my final tip when it comes to concealing at appendix is going to be the thing that maybe you're not gonna wanna hear, and that is get in shape. If you lift weights and build out your chest and your shoulders, that is going to push your shirt further out away from your body. If your chest sticks out further than your stomach, then it is going to cause a shirt to drape like curtains right over the top, giving you lots of negative space between your chest and your belt line to hide your gun. Now, I'm not claiming to be a Mr. Muscle Man here, Nano machine, son. but my chest does stick further out than my stomach. And if you're a bigger guy, check out Active Self Protection Extra channel and search for his appendix carry videos. They'll help you figure out any issues that you might have that 
I just simply haven't had to deal with. So those are my tips to carrying appendix. Hopefully they help guide you on your journey of concealed carry. If you enjoyed the video, you know the drill. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. The algorithm really works against gun channels. So if you want to see my channel blossom into being a bigger and greater channel, be sure to take a second to click those buttons and type those keys. Check out my books in the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I'm Brett and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out.